This is just a short repair video to look at an issue that I believe is very common and if you're familiar with this problem you may recognize this component. It's an engine stop relay from a very well known brand of diesel mower and um, if you're not familiar with the way that diesel engines work then the simple mechanical diesel engine uh, system that uses mechanical injection once you've got them running as long as you supply them with air and fuel they'll keep going so unlike a petrol engine where you can just stop the engine by switching it off and stopping the spark you can't do that with a simple mechanical diesel engine because there is no uh, spark ignition and there's no electronic components that drive it so to stop them what you normally do is have a stop a solenoid system so effectively it's a, a large solenoid that when you turn the uh, ignition key off the solenoid is energized for a few seconds to allow the engine time to come to a stop and uh, it works by just interrupting the uh, fuel injection system to stop fuel being injected into the engine um, but unfortunately this component is very frequently used it's, it's used in hundreds of different um, diesel mowers and tractors and um, I've had uh, I have a few of these mowers and um, these are always failing they're a real pain and they're expensive they can be anything up to 150 pounds each depending on where you get them from and um, I was getting fed up replacing these so I decided to try and take one apart and see if I could do anything about repairing them uh, looking online it does appear this is a very common problem so this um, may help other people so I decided to make this video just to show what my solution was and uh, you can see already I've uh, cracked this open and uh, I was actually quite surprised what I found inside uh, not so much from the, um, the type of circuit it was what I expected but it's a very poor design uh, at least for this application now I'm not really blaming the manufacturer of the relay here uh, unless they designed it specifically for this application which they probably didn't uh, this is more down to the manufacturer of the mower this is not a good component to use uh, for this application and I'll, I'll explain why um, firstly when I first took this off and looked at opening it I was quite um, surprised and I thought uh, here we go we can fix this because it had some uh, tabs on it to allow me to pop the case open so I thought it would be an easy case of popping this open and I assumed that um, what had failed in here was the actual mechanical relay because it actually clicks now the way this is supposed to work there are four terminals one's ground one's a permanent 12 volts and the other one is a 12 volt control through the ignition and then the last connection is an output to control the solenoid and what's supposed to happen is when you turn the ignition on nothing is really supposed to change but when you turn the ignition back off the 12 volt input the permanent 12 volt is supposed to be connected to the solenoid output for about five seconds and then it should turn back off and that uh, is what uh, causes the engine to stop uh, and it was clicking I could hear the relay changing state but there was um, no connection coming through to the solenoid output so I assumed that the um, the contacts on the internal relay were burnt out um, but it's actually kind of worse than that so I decided to open it up um, popped open the tabs and this then separated from the pins on the board which are soldered to the board and unfortunately this uh, was potted as you can see I've removed the um, board it uh, wasn't easy and there's no way to do it without pretty much destroying the uh, the board and um, but I wanted to see what was in here and it was only potted half of the way up so I can only assume it's been potted simply to stop anyone trying to repair it and uh, the reason I say that is because um, if you're going to pot something then if it's for moisture protection then uh, it needs to be potted all the way up otherwise it's pointless um, but in this case it's got a mechanical relay so that's the part that's most likely to fail most of the rest of the parts are surface mount so the purpose of potting a relay is kind of bizarre because um, We'll see inside the relay all the parts are still going to vibrate around and so it becomes a completely pointless exercise um, but when I did finally get this open managed to get the board out I took the top off the relay 
And what I found kind of surprised me, and it's, you're not really going to be able to see this very well, but this is a changeover relay, or at least it's supposed to be a changeover relay. Now this contact doesn't go anywhere, it's not connected to anything. So the contacts we're looking at are the normally open contacts, so that's the moving part and the center plate where the tip of the screwdriver now is, and that goes through and is the output that drives the solenoid. Now, as I said, you probably can't see this, but the top contact, that's this fixed contact and the moving contact have the usual relay high temperature pads on them. That's the bit that uh, allows the uh, contact to make and break cleanly and doesn't burn away. Um, but on the underside, the normally open, the contact we're using, there is no pad, it's just a flat piece of um, brass that goes out of the relay. So there isn't even a proper contact in this relay and the solenoid this is driving draws about 10 amps. So this is completely unsuitable for this application and I'm surprised they work at all and it does explain why uh, these fail so frequently. As I say, the, the circuit was working, it was energizing the relay, um, but there was just no uh, contact and it doesn't surprise me there is just no contact on this whatsoever. I thought at first it may have burnt away, but looking at it under a microscope, there's no sign there was ever a pad either on the moving part of the contact or on the uh, underside, on the fixed uh, part of the contact. So completely pointless, uh, on top of which this is mostly surface mount, so potting it, uh, unless you're looking to protect it from moisture ingress, is completely pointless. Um, so it wasn't really repairable, what I decided to do was design my own version of this, so I'll just get that onto the bench now and show you what the solution was. Um, first thing was I wanted to get rid of the mechanical relay. This, these mowers generate a lot of vibration. Um, as I say, that's one of the reasons you'd normally pot something, but um, the inside of the relay is obviously still subject to vibration anyway, so the potting would not help that. Um, so I decided to go with a solid state design to replace this and I'll show you what I've come up with. Okay so this is the circuit I've put together based around that device and uh, the idea here is to uh, design and make a few PCBs that will fit into the original case um, but because of course we've got rid of the relay and we now have a solid state design uh, I can fully pot it and it should last the life of the machine and we don't have the um, mechanical relay failing and the contacts burning away. And it will handle up to about 20 amps as I said, so it will easily handle the load for this application, but it should be far more reliable and uh, hopefully it will be a, a permanent fix. So just to explain this circuit and how it works. Okay, so this is the circuit, very straightforward. We have the MOSFET and this particular MOSFET, when we take the gate high, um, will turn fully off. When we take the ga gate low relative to the source, it will turn fully on. It's got a non-resistance of about 0.1 ohms, so um, it's not really going to dissipate any real energy in real power, so we don't even need a heatsink. Uh, the only time it's really dissipating much energy is as it's turning off because the turn off is relatively slow but it's still less than uh, half a second to turn off so it's not really going to dissipate much uh, energy and so we don't need to bother with the heatsink. The way this circuit works is very very straightforward and um, we have a permanent 12 volt supply going to the MOSFET and the ignition supply comes in on this line and it firstly goes through this divider network and causes this transistor to be turned fully on. So as long as we have ignition voltage, this transistor will be turned fully on. That in turn pulls the base of this transistor low and makes sure it's turned off. And then this resistor pulls the gate of the MOSFET high and turns it fully off. And at the same time when the ignition is turned on through this steering diode and through this resistor, this capacitor is charged up and although there is this divider network across it feeding the base of this transistor, this transistor cannot turn on because its base is force low because this transistor is fully on. 
and it will stay in that state as long as the ignition is on. When the ignition is turned off, this voltage disappears and so this transistor turns off and its collector floats. That allows the base of this transistor to be pulled high through this resistor because this capacitor is still charged up. It doesn't discharge through this route and it doesn't keep this transistor turned on because of the steering diode. And so the voltage on the capacitor causes this transistor to turn fully on and that pulls the gate of the MOSFET low and it turns the MOSFET on. So that will then supply current from the permanent 12 volt supply through to the load. And that will keep uh, the load powered up until the capacitor voltage dies away, at which point this transistor will turn back off and through this resistor the gate of the MOSFET is pulled back high and so it turns off. So we'll just demonstrate that. I've got the circuit hooked up. We've got uh, ground coming in through the black lead. I've got the permanent 12 volts coming in through the red. And we've got a dummy load here, just a few resistors. The LED is wide across them so we can see that it's actually doing what it's supposed to and the white wire simulates our ignition uh, input. So if I turn the ignition on by taking this high, which is what the mower would do, nothing seems to happen, but it has activated the circuit. So when we now turn the ignition back off, we can see that the LED has come on. You can hear the power supply complaining, it's drawing quite a bit of power, and after a few seconds, the circuit turns back off. And that's exactly what the uh, original component used to do, except it used a relay instead of a solid state MOSFET. So we'll turn the ignition back on, on needs to be on briefly, and you can see that reactivates the circuit, and this will uh, cause the uh, engine stop solenoid to come on for a few seconds. So you can see it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Um, the only difference is that when it's potted, a completely solid state and it should easily last the life of the machine. Okay well I hope you found that uh, useful or interesting if you do have one of these machines and you have one of these that's failed then maybe you could consider doing something similar and uh, save yourself uh, about a hundred pounds.